I look back at Ka- uh, Kawhi's career just briefly before talking about the series of the Suns versus Suns, uh, Suns versus Clippers. In 2017, we were robbed of Kawhi versus KD, where in game one, first half, they're up. The Warriors, without Kawhi, go on to absolutely dominate the Spurs in four games. 2019, in the NBA Finals, Kevin Durant only played 12 minutes before he ruptured his Achilles tendon in Game 5, just in the second quarter. That was a heartbreaker, and it ended the series right there. That was a second playoff series for Robs. Then in 2021, in 2020-21, meanwhile, the Brooklyn Nets were on route to absolutely dismantle the Milwaukee Bucks, who looked like they forgot how to shoot the ball against them, and then James Harden, who was down, does not return. When he does return, we realize he's on one leg. Kyrie, meanwhile, suffers an ankle sprain. And Kawhi, on the other hand, tears his ACL partially in Game 5. Game 4 versus the Utah Jazz. So what would have been a Kawhi versus Kevin Durant NBA Finals for the second time in three years was stolen from us. Now this year, we see Kawhi in Game 1 outscore Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Chris Paul in the second half of Game 1, taking the series without Paul George in the lineup, let alone. And then after Game 2, he's out basically for the rest of the series. That's four straight playoff runs. All in the odd years that were stripped from us of the two best wins of this era after LeBron James. And let me tell you something. The Clippers, we'll talk about the series in a brief moment. They have to continue on this path because they don't have their first round pick next year or in 2025 or in 2026. This is what they're doing. They chose this path four years ago. And because they have no draft picks, trading Kawhi Leonard, the thought of it just is not going to make any sense ever because no matter what pick you get it's always going to be worse than the pick you'll be superseding if you are rebuilding with all that being said man uh russell westbrook norman powell they're leading this clippers team can this be a relatively competitive game four uh and can they somehow steal a game to maybe get Kawhi back hopefully down uh three two in game five the thing, the thing with this the thing with Kawhi, with me is the injuries throughout his career He's technically never not been injury prone. It's just all it was when he was on the Spurs, it was always smaller ones where he'd miss a little bit of time. But he's one of those guys that you're never gonna you're never gonna really in the regular season at least, you're not gonna get him to play through an injury that you know he knows can get worse. Like he will stand on that I'm sitting out tonight. When it's the postseason time, he's always gonna play, it doesn't matter what. But um I can't say too much because the more I look at that Spurs Warriors series, I'm just like, it was a great game one, but give them some time. They were probably going to get washed in that series. You don't think way. Jonathan Simmons and Kawhi could have, you know, <laughs> taken look, Kawhi, down? Kawhi is great. Kawhi was great. Kawhi was insane that time. He's not Superman, bro. Like, it was a great game one. Good. Uh, See y'all in five. Superman, Superman ends two different three-peats. That's what he does. Okay, you ended you ended a uh, injured injured Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh led LeBron James team one time. You ended a Kevin Rantless Raptors team one time. And what other three P did he end? Those are the two. You said three. I say he ended two different three peats. Oh, right, my bad. Yeah. Man, I'm not gonna give him too much credit when every single time one of the best players on the other team is injured. But overall for the Clippers, they're not I don't think they're trapped on this timeline. But it is, it is insane for the past four years you go into every single offseason like if only we were healthy. Like it's and if you it almost feels it, like a team in New Orleans. Oh. It almost feels like they're legit cursed. Because at the end of the day, I don't think they're trapped in this timeline. You can always just say screw it and trade PG and Kawhi, and there's gonna be a team that wants them. And I don't care if you don't recoup an asset that's as great as as um Kawhi. The thing is, the thing you're trying to do is not recoup an asset. It's to get yourself off of this timeline that's going to have you trapped on this hamster wheel of mediocrity for the rest of the next decade. You need a direction. And right now, this team obviously is doesn't have the cap space, doesn't have the um, assets, and doesn't have the talent to actually build a championship roster around either of them at two, two anymore. And those two can't stand the court consistently. So blow this shit up. Start over. You're going to be trapped in Miotic for maybe another year or two, depending on how well you do this rebuild. And um, don't market your future on Paul George again, or anybody like that. Ooh. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, where do I begin? Um, man, I could not disagree more anymore with all of your takes, Romain. Um But we'll, we'll stay in, in current day. We won't have to, we don't have to rehash 2017. Um, 
so currently right now, um, here, here's first things first, right, in terms of trading Kawhi and Paul George. Uh, I don't see that happening, and I don't think it's a possibility right now because I think you guys are both forgetting uh, some the reason why Steve Ballmer um, kind of, you know, went all in on Kawhi and Paul George. It's because they have a brand new arena opening up next year, uh, and they need to sell tickets. Uh, so you cannot start over and rebuild – uh, when you have to also sell tickets to a brand new stadium uh, arena that probably cost billions of dollars. That's not going to work. So, yeah, Paul George and Kawhi are going to stay there. Um, and in terms of this not being a, a well-built championship team, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm, I come from a completely different perspective, but – if both I didn't Paul George and Kawhi are a championship built team, I'm just saying that they can't be a championship built team when you have two players that are never going to consist- the two best players are never going to consistently be on the court. Okay, that's well, fine. you have Russell Westbrook. It changes. Well, no, that that's that that's a that's the fair that's a fair point with the injuries. I'm talking if we're talking they're they're both healthy. I mean, they oh, beat yeah, they can beat anybody. Six. They beat the Suns in six. They beat the Nuggets in six or seven. And then whoever they meet in the Western Conference Finals, they beat, and then they most likely win the championship. I'm I'm pretty confident when I say that that if both Kawhi and Paul George are healthy with this team, they win the championship. They're the deepest team, in my opinion. Um, they have the best head coach, arguably, in the entire league uh, or association, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it, the the way Ty Lue is able to get the best out of all of his players his in-series adjustments, his in-game adjustments are special. So I, I, I'm pretty comfortable and confident saying that the Clippers would have been your uh, champions uh, if not for injuries this year. But, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see Kawhi and Paul George leaving this team. Uh, so, Brent, I agree with your point. Romain, there's no way they're trading Kawhi and PG. Like, for us, it's so easy to say just trade them, but they don't have their picks. And that's why it just – makes remotely no sense it's kind of like the nets after kevin garnett and paul pierce except these guys are still in their early 30s they're still top 15 top 20 players Kawhi's still a top five player in his peak i said you only said to trade paul george maybe keep Kawhi, but to be honest you're not going to find a better robin than paul george and brennan to talk about your clippers they were not winning the championship they're healthy this year um I, I think the suns team is so bad off the bench and so poorly built around kevin durant and devin booker they make all of these role players look much better than they actually are. Case in point, Russell Westbrook's playing the best playoff basketball and probably, well, since his time in Oklahoma City. I mean, he's gained to the rim with very... Since 2012, to be honest. Which was over a decade ago. He's gained to the rim with maniacal intent. And he's also making his jumpers. Went three or six last night for three-point range. And when Russ is making three-point shots, not even at a good level, but just... If he can competently op- make open shots, the game opens up for him. Now, DeAndre Ayton this year has been such a traffic cone around the rim, protecting it and actually showing some level of effort, that it's been a lot easier for us to drive to the rim. Okay, it's just going one-on-one on whatever Suns defenders poorly equipped to defend him with his power length and finishes, which are going in. But the bottom line is for the Clippers, this wasn't going to be the year for them. I mean, they were one of the worst defenses in the NBA. Their bench, which looks good now, is really being propped up by a poor Suns team. I think the biggest thing for the Clippers was we knew this was the risk. Um, there's not much surprise here, the fact that Paul George and Kawhi are both injured because this was the only thing holding them back. Uh, at the end of the day, they move into this all season. I don't think they're going to win game five, and this will probably be a five-gamer. They move into this all season with the pretty clear choice of extending Russell Westbrook, and I think the end game for them is giving Kawhi a little bit more rest. And for a second year off a torn ACL, maybe next year, he's kind of like the end of this season, missing less time than the regular season. So you get a better seed in the fifth spot, and that will enable you in the first round to get a favorable matchup. I think from there, the Suns, or sorry, I think from there, the Clippers, and year five of this, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard era are going to have to ride the ship. And hopefully you can make it out the first round healthy. From there, you've got one of the five best players in the world. Well, I for just... You, oh, for me, when I said trade him, I didn't mean trade him for, like, another young player. I mean, actually trade them to recoup draft assets. Maybe another yeah. young player, but actually get recoup draft assets. Like, there's always going to be a team out there dumb... There's always going to be a team out there dumb enough, like a Minnesota, like an Atlanta, that think they're one piece away, 
and that will mortgage their future for an injury riddled piece or a piece that doesn't fit their team. And there's, it doesn't matter how many times a team make that mistake. There's always going to be another one right behind them, ready to make the same mistake over right. and over again. So I do think there's a chance you do trade them. I'm not here saying that you try to like retool this to still compete. No, I'm saying retool this so you're bad for the next three years, and then you can re- rebuild out. Yeah, that. but see that that's 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 the point where you're missing is they have a brand new stadium uh, arena they have to sell out. No, more importantly, they, they don't have their first round picks, so the stadium is less important, honestly, when it comes to team building. I see where you're coming from, but the value... you know, he's talking. We're main saying get the draft picks from the Paul George trade. No, if you trade Paul George and also Kawhi, you're going to be ass. And if you're ass giving up your first round picks to the Oklahoma City Thunder the next three years, the 26 pick you get from the Miami Heat for Kawhi Leonard is going to do you no good. No, yeah, the obvious. I would think it'd probably be a three team deal. Um, if I'd imagine. Well, what I what team, what but... I'm what I'm thinking is that you trade Kawhi and then the mortgage, the pieces that you do get for him is probably going to uproot a certain team. A little bit too much because it's still Kawhi Leonard, but Kawhi is also so injury prone that when it's time to actually win something, he's not going to be there enough. So you're still going to get a decent draft pick out of that. Yeah, I just it's it, this this is a mute point for me because it's not going to happen. They have an arena; they have to sell out, and and yeah, you're not gonna, I can't it, believe it, you guys it, just it, overlooked it, in the part they don't have their first round picks. They don't. We understand they don't have their first round picks, but it's it's about they have their superstars and they need to sell an arena out. So that's why they're not trading Kawhi and Paul George. Also, I think the picks matters more than the arena. Whatever they trade, whatever they whatever they not get back for Paul George and Kawhi is not going to be equal or better value of those players. That has always been the case for star and superstar talents. You do not get equal or better value for that. That is always yeah, the been person. The- Except you're, unless you're the Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay. I mean, again, John, there's a reason why Portland holds on to Dame the way they do is because if Dame isn't there, they're not selling. They're not selling tickets. Like, it's better to be mediocre sometimes and still sell out the arena for these owners because you still make money during the season versus you literally not selling out tickets at all and you're being in the red every single season. Like, yeah. it's it's a lot better It's a lot better to have your superstars there even when you're losing because the name does sell tickets. Yeah, I do I do want to speak on this. John said, you know, maybe Kawhi is going to play more games. I don't, I, Kawhi is going to play anywhere from 50 to 60 games, uh, even if he's fully healthy. That's just where Kawhi is, I think. Um, but let me speak on Russell Westbrook, right? Cause I was probably the hardest on Russell Westbrook on this show. Um, I basically called him a player that can't be on a winning team. Uh, he is a inefficient, um, turnover machine, doesn't play defense type of player. And that's not built for a winning championship team. I have, uh, I, I that crow that I just spat out. I and and now I'm eating. I I eat with the 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 most honor I possibly could have. I love that Russell Westbrook made me look good because it, it is a beautiful day when you see a player who can completely transform his game and now can honestly have another five to seven years of great basketball. Do you think um, Russell playing great basketball? Forty one. Oh, wait, how old is he then? How old is he? 34. Okay, well, you, you know what I mean. Sorry. Then that, 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 so, like, th- three to four years of great basketball. You, you know what I mean. Um, but it, it, it's it, it's just a beautiful sight to see because we've seen it with AI. We saw it with Carmelo. We've seen it with a lot of players not willing to buy in, not wanting to do the the little things and the, and the gritty things that, um, the, you know, role players do. Uh, Russell Westbrook is bought in. Um, and I, I just think it's a beautiful thing to see, honestly. I, I, I want to apologize for Russell Westbrook. I want to praise Russell Westbrook. Um, it, it's He has literally won me over in this series. Uh, he it, It's I, – I do think the Clippers need to re-sign him because uh, I think he you fits drinking that You're drinking that Kool-Aid, Brandon. I'm, I'm I'll, not, I'll say he's the – he's, he's, he's accept- Do you tell me he's not accepted the role? So no, when, what when, I'm saying, what I'm saying is the apology part. I'm not going to apologize to him because he. Well, wasn't no, I'm this- not. No, no, no. You're. You don't have to. But I'm. I. I feel the necessity because I was very, uh, very hard on Russell Westbrook, and I said that I don't think he's going to change. I called him a selfish player. I. I attacked the man. So I'm rightfully so because he proved he proved me wrong. And in my opinion, I when I'm being proven wrong, and somebody owns up and says, you know what? No, 
I'm go. I know I can. I can take a, a step back and accept my right. role and do my job. I'm going to commend a player for that. I'm going to apologize for for the words mm-hmm. that I use to Russell. You don't have to, but I'm going to because I feel the need to. do To that. be fair, right? how much so has he stepped I, back? I, to be fair, how much has he stepped back? To be fair, game one he took 19 shots. I mean, he's doing this well, with no, 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 PGA no, no, no. Kawhi out. Like, Why is he? He's still taking those shots because he still is the second best player on that team. Right. Because yeah. Paul George is out. Okay. He, he, but the way the stepping back was. He's trying on defense. Russell Westbrook was never known for defense. <laughs> was so- I don't think that's taking a step. I don't think that's taking a step that back. That's a, just- no, taking a step back. That is accepting a role and understanding that I can provide for my team in different ways than just being a score first player and yeah. being me, 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 me. He's not that anymore. He's showing that you know what I'm going to try on defense. I think all the games going up to this right now have shown you that he is the offensive rebounding, competing on the boards, getting the boards, playing the hustle plays. I'm just saying all these things that Russell Westbrook is now buying into, I'm I'm loving, and I think he needs to be back on the Clippers. I think he fits perfectly. I think he fits so much better on the Clippers than he did in the Lakers because the two best players above him, Kawhi and Paul George, can make three-pointers at a consistent uh, uh, rate. They're elite shooters. AD, no, and, AD and LeBron were not. So you had three guys that cannot make three-point shooters, all sub, what, 35 34% from three. That's not Paul George and Kawhi. They can make their shots. So now when both guys are back, trust me, Russell Westbrook can be that pure point guard. He's going to facilitate. He's going to get the guys open. The guy at 34 can still get to the – I said LeBron gets to the rim at uh, will. What? And I know you want to talk about DeAndre. Russell Westbrook can get, the, get to the rim at will on anybody. I don't care who it is, okay? Anybody, he can get to the rim at will. When he wants to, he's getting to the rim. Is he going to complete the shot? Maybe not. Maybe it's going to, you know, go sporadically. The ball is going to go out of the place. But can he get to the rim? Yes, he can. So he can still attack that defense. Do the little things Russell Westbrook is going to do. And I think, listen, if if it all stands, obviously, on Kawhi and Paul George, if these guys are healthy, I think Kawhi more than anything. Paul George has, has been injured here and there. But for the most part, he's been actually uh, healthier than Kawhi. But those guys are healthy. This team, I truly believe, is a championship team. Not a contender. A championship team, a team that is built to win the finals. I truly do believe that. 